Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Manu. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Rufai. Good, Good morning, morning, Ayo. Good morning, sir. Yes, we start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. We flip through the headlines quickly, then we'll look at the closing remarks or closing arguments, as lawyers will put it in court, of the four frontrunners in uh, the presidential polls coming up in two days' time. Now, the guy, the the... This is the newspaper, the list story, National Security Council. Elections will hold as scheduled. Police probing some governors for allegedly inciting violence. U.S. harps on peaceful, free, fair voting process in Nigeria. PDP, PCC condemns attack on TV, radio stations in rivers. Yes, the National Security Council met for the first time in 2023, yesterday, with the president, with the Muhammad Buhari presiding, and the assurance being given to all Nigerians. The elections will hold as a schedule. Nothing is going to change that. Now, the Guardian newspaper, again, Supreme Court defers ruling on Naira redesign to after election. Consolidated suits by 16 states fixes March 3. For judgment, await our decision. Supreme Court tells Abia, other states seeking to join suits, we are overburdened. Something must be done in Nigerian constitution. Judges lament. Nigerian left to left in the middle of the sea. Sheosani reacts. Cash swap riots. We are investigating governors over inciting utterance. Says IGP. Now the New Telegraph newspaper also reporting that story. Suit challenging Naira swap. Major setback for vote buyers as Supreme Court fixes March 3 for judgment. Now, the Vanguard newspaper, Naira knows governors under investigation for inciting utterances. While the, yes, the Nation newspaper, uh, why I seek your mandate to be president by Tinimbu, APC candidate, writes Nigerians. Now, if we look at what these candidates are saying, the frontline candidates, Atiku Abubakar, Siwa Jibola, Ahmed Tinimbu, Rabiu Kwankwanso, and of course, Peter Gregory Obi of the Labour Party. What are they saying in their closing remarks? Yes, if we look at, uh, if we put that up quickly, Atiku, to my compatriots, why I seek your mandate to be president of Nigeria. Of course, He's, he said, in all the states we have visited, there is visible landmarks. No, sorry, that's not, uh, I just take, um, yes, Atiku. Yes, what Atiku is saying that I am a product of Nigeria that is now but a distant memory. In Nigeria, we have taken from but cannot bequeath to our children. And he went further to say that the PDP has selected me as a presidential candidate because they believe that I possess the characteristics and experience needed to lead the efforts to rebuild our country at this time and the ability to execute the plans we have set out. And of course, he highlighted uh, what he called this covenant with Nigerians. My plans for Nigeria and Nigerians are as follows to restore Nigeria's unity through equity, social justice, mutual collaboration, and consensus among our diverse people. Uh, also talks of uh, um, to build a strong and effective democratic governance, which where the safety and security of our people and their property is our primary and singularly most important responsibility also talks of strong, resilient, inclusive, prosperous economy that generates opportunities, jobs, and wealth, rebuilds a vibrant middle class. Yes, to encourage the adoption of true federalism. Yes, AKA restructuring, which um, Atiku has said that he already has a blueprint, a bill to be taken to the National Assembly in the first 100 days 
of his administration if he is elected. Now, Bola have made Tinubu to my compatriots. Yes. Why I seek your mandate to be president of Nigeria. Yes. He's the one saying, in all the states we have visited, there are visible landmarks of the huge impact of President Muhammadu Buhari administration has made in terms of infrastructural development in the form of rural, urban roads and expressways, modern railways, tracks, as well as improved airport facilities. Then he went further to say, of course, we are aware of the hardship suffered by our people and the challenges confronting our country. Some of these could have been mitigated by better conceptualized and articulated policy. The truth is that there can be no perfect government in any human community. Yes, then he went further to say, Shetima and I have outstanding records of high performance at public office as governors of our states. In Lagos, where I served as governor for eight remarkable years, I led a team of talented, hardworking, creative, intelligent, and purposeful people that recalibrated governance and set new standards in good governance that continues to propel the state to greater growth and development till dates. Yes, that's Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the standard bearer of the APC, making his speech. He said, well, the administration will work to ensure not just farewell to poverty, but also to usher in an era of prosperity in our country. Now, Rabiu Kwan Kwan So, Rabiu Kwan Kwan So, yes, also making his speech uh, for the top job in the land. Ah. Uh, Yes, saying that uh, LNPP's pledge to Nigerians uh, under, uh, under the leadership of Rabi Musa Kwan Kwan So, PhD. And um, of course, he talked of education, that he will make education accessible, quality education to all Nigerian children. Will that be free education? Where is the money going to come from? But Kwan Kwan Su has a record. In Kano, where he was governor for two terms, uh, where he took education to another level, bringing the children of the poor to have quality education. Yes. And of course, we we'll talk of Peter Obi. A new Nigeria is possible on 25th of February 2020. Peter Obi promising to take Nigeria from consumption to production. He has harped on that message over and over again. Of course, the businessman Peter Gregory Obi, uh, his track record in Anambra states, in utilizing scarce funds that he said he will bring to the center when Nigerians elect him as president on February 25, between these four men, the clearly the front runners, Ruben, Rufai, and Ayo. This is a phrase, closing arguments. Yes. Because that's what it is. Yes. It's not remarks. Closing arguments is what lawyers present mm -hmm. when they are summarizing the evidence that they have provided before the jurors for the court to take a decision that is favorable to their own interpretation. And if you extend that, uh, you know, analogy. This is like uh, the campaigns that these, people, these uh, politicians have been having before the people of Nigeria. This is the last moment. The final campaigns pitch, as end it were. tonight, 24 hours to the general elections. And it's good that this day newspaper has provided an opportunity for the four leading candidates to present the arguments before the Nigerian people. Now the court of the people, we the people of Nigeria, recognized by the constitution, the people of voting age, 93.4 million, going to vote in this election across the country. It's now for the people to decide. What we can ask for is for the people of Nigeria, all the arguments have been closed now, presented before them, is for the people of Nigeria to make an informed choice. For the voting population of Nigeria,
to be allowed to make that choice freely and fairly as uh, President Muhammad Buhari has promised that he would do. And for all the security agencies to provide the necessary protection. And for INEC to do his job in a very fair manner and to deliver a process that is credible. The international community is watching. All of them are on the ground. From the AU to the Commonwealth to the US mission to everybody. So Nigeria is not alone. The EU has been here since uh, January. So this is not just about the four candidates, the four leading candidates, or the 18 presidential candidates. It's about the future of Nigeria and Nigeria's place in the world. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'll just say just one line. In terms of what Dr. Bate said about informed decision, I believe that all registered voters should intimate themselves with this closing argument and what the candidates have promised that they will do and vote on that, not based on um, personal biases or along religious or tribal lines. Important because those are not the things that would fix a nation. It is the position of the leader and what he says he will do and that will hold them to account if whoever emerges as um, president. The destiny of Nigeria is the answer of the, the people, the electorate, the electorate on and, Saturday, and and true to type, true power in this electoral process belongs to the people. That's why you need to go vote wisely. Well, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Thank you.